Uh, good evening, YouTubers. Thank you for uh, checking out my channel. Hopefully uh, this will be of some help to you. Today I'm gonna be talking to you about how I survived a Buddhist boot camp and started my journey towards inner well-being. Well, I think it was about 11 years ago now, I was invited to a Buddhist monastery by my really good friend, Matt. At the time, I was working actually at a place called Center for Neuroskills doing rehabilitation for traumatic brain injury patients. So I had met my friend Matt through that job. He was a behavior analyst there, and he invited me to go to this monastery. I had already like invited him many, many times to go on different hiking excursions or uh, doing some camping or stuff like that because I'm really big into the outdoors because uh, that's where I feel happiest. And so he uh, invited me to this place close to San Diego um, in, a, in a small town called Valley Center. Uh, the monastery I went to uh, is called uh, Metta Forest Monastery. And there's this great Buddhist monk there named Ajahn Jeffrey. Uh, I think he's been a monk now for over 40 years. Uh, he's from uh, the States, and he uh, traveled to Thailand and ordained uh, just over 40 years ago. And he's been the abbot of this monastery, I think, for nearly 20 years now in Valley Center. So um, I go there not knowing what to expect. I was very open-minded. So the first thing I experienced was uh, I needed a tent to stay there. So I didn't have a tent, but they had a bunch of loner tents in a little makeshift shed. So I went into the shed to look for a tent to use. And they had all these platforms. Uh, platforms that I could like basically set my temp tent up and set my sleeping bag inside the tent. So it was recommended uh, when you went to the monastery to keep your phone off, keep your electronics off and away so that you can focus on what everybody was trying to do there is basically uh, examining ourselves and that's basically what we were doing. So that first night, we get there just before the sun goes down and then we're directed to uh, this shed to go get our tent and so we can place the tent in our uh, sleeping area. So I find a, a number of different platforms that were open. They're all inside this amazing uh, avocado orchard. So they got all kinds of avocados here at this particular monastery. It's up on a hill, beautiful blue skies, uh, beautiful sunsets in the distance. In fact, it just, it's a really kind of magical place there in Valley Center. Uh, oftentimes the Theravada Buddhist monks uh, prefer to be in a forest type of monastery and that's where this was. It was in more of a forest type of setting amongst these avocado orchards and a number of other types of trees. So that first night we go through meditation and uh, little did I know that the meditation is like 60 minutes long. It was the first time I ever did meditation. I was like, gosh, this is lasting forever. I couldn't find any way to like just feel like at ease. My legs were hurting. I was trying to sit in this lotus position. Uh, they kind of recommend you to sit in, but it didn't work for me. I, it was, I was just hurting. I, w I had the, a little cushion behind my bottom trying to get into a position that I could actually sit in for a period of time. But uh, it seemed like every several minutes I would just move and go into a different position. So they taught us like a, a breath meditation. They wanted us to uh, really focus on the breath. The abbot actually did like a Dhamma talk where he uh, would basically give some Buddhist teachings uh, and so we listened to that for a period of time at the beginning of the uh, session. And then eventually he uh, stops the Dhamma talk and then we're just sitting in silence. So while we're sitting in silence, I'm just kind of breathing kind of hard. And I don't realize that I'm disturbing everybody else in the uh, meditation group. And then the abbot, he tells, uh, he says, who's doing that? And then he's telling him, Telling uh, the person that stop, that's doing that, which is me, to stop that. And so I do. I, I don't breathe as hard. I'm not kind of, almost feel like I was kind of hyperventilating because I was, I was thinking that maybe be helpful to get more of it into a, like a meditation trance or anything, but it wasn't. So 
it was hard for me to uh, get any distance from my mind or my body. Everything was kind of painful. I kept going back and forth. All kinds of thoughts were coming up and I was kind of being pretty attached to them. And I wasn't very uh, calm because I was feeling pain in my legs and my body. It was hard for my back to feel comfortable too. I always felt like I had to like bend my spine just to kind of get a little bit more comfortable. So that was my first uh, experience with meditation. And uh, in my opinion, it was, I didn't really didn't have a very good meditation practice that first time I attempted to meditate. So after that excruciatingly long hour was over, uh, we were directed to go back to our tents or possibly even conduct more meditation, some like standing meditation, some walking meditation uh, amongst our sleeping areas that we were in. Um, I was already tired and uh, I was kind of hungry too because we didn't have anything for dinner or whatnot. So I had maybe a few snacks. So I think I snacked it on maybe like a clip bar or something like that. And then, so uh, I got a, a few... There was a few some books at the at the uh, area that we uh, had practice of meditation that were written by Ajahn Jeffrey. He wrote a, a number of books, maybe like up to upwards is maybe close to a hundred books that he's written. Uh, that are a lot of translations from what was taught by the Buddha in the language of Pali. So from this uh, big uh, grouping of books that were written a long time ago in this uh, old language of Pali. I think it was the size of like maybe a hundred Encyclopedia Britannica. That's how much is written uh, uh, from the Buddha's teachings in this language called Pali. So he's translated some things into English. So it'd be much easier for somebody to understand some of the Buddha's teachings. So I took a few of the books that were free to uh, for lay people to grab. So I started off with a book called With Each and Every Breath. With each and every breath was uh, like a book basically to teach you how to meditate. It's like a guide to meditation. Uh, what I understand is uh, many monks in the past were always wanting Ajahn Jeffrey to write a book on meditation. But he said there's already really great books on meditation that were written by uh, Ajahn Chah and some other great Buddhist monks. And so he didn't feel like the need to write this book. But eventually, uh, he felt compelled to write it, and he did. And I think it came out maybe like 10 or 15, maybe like 15 years ago or so. And then I, I got a copy there, and so I was reading through it. And it kind of gets you into, tells you basically how to prepare your mind and your body for the meditation. And then how to go into like a body scan to kind of breathe, bring breath into each part of your body so you can get more physical ease within the body. So I was reading that book a little bit that night and then I fell asleep and woke up. And then once I woke up really early, we had another meditation. So I think it was like at 6 a.m. So everybody, uh, for some reason, I'm waking up no problem with that on the alarm too. So I wake up, I think at five something in the morning, I'm more than uh, on time for the meditation. So we meet back in this meditation hall to do the early morning meditation. So I think there's maybe like five or six or seven of us that make it to this morning meditation at 6 a.m. So I make it, I'm already feeling kind of like in pain from the night before of trying to sit in meditation. I think my body's a little bit sore from trying to sit in the lotus position. So here it goes again. Let's try it again. We're going to try this uh, meditation again. So it's pretty similar how we start. Uh, so he basically walks us through uh, and guides us through meditation and how to concentrate on the breath. And then he winds up going through an, another Dhamma talk. We do actually uh, added thing that I realized that we would do. We did some uh, early morning chanting as well. So we did some chanting and after the chanting and the guided meditation and then um, another Dhamma talk of teaching, uh, from the Buddha, we're going through the 60 minutes. And once again, it was painful to say the least. It was not easy for me to go through the morning meditation. All I could think about is like how much pain my legs were feeling. It was feeling my foot was falling asleep. My, 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 uh, my legs were just not in a, in a good position. My lower back was hurting. My upper back was hurting. My middle, middle of my back was hurting. I kept having to move just to kind of get some uh, relief. So I'm going to the meditation and uh, 
I'm trying to concentrate on my breath and I notice my thoughts are just kind of racing. I'm thinking about this thing and that thing. And of course, I'm guided just to kind of go back to the breath. Every time I lose focus, just go back to the breath. That's my meditation object. Just go back to the breath. So that's what I'm doing. And then so after we're done with the meditation, of course, it felt like forever because I had, this is only the second time I meditated. And I still didn't feel like I knew anything like what I was doing whatnot still seemed very foreign to me like what is this supposed to do for me and then uh later in the morning uh we had a little bit of chore time so basically at the monastery when lay people stay at the monastery to help out the community there at the monastery uh trying to pick up a chore to do during the morning so in the morning i helped out sweeping uh, an area there's an area one of the walkways that needed to be swept so i was asked to do so so i swept that area and once i was done then I did another chore. I went over to the kitchen and started helping meal, meal prep because uh, the monks, they can only eat. Um, they're only eating like one time a day and they're not supposed to actually prepare or make their own food. Um, the Buddha set it up that way so they would be reliant on the Sangra. The Sangra meaning the um, community of lay people that are Buddhists. And they basically are there to help and um, do some of these tasks for the monks that they're not supposed to be able to do to really um, show their respects for the Buddha and show compassion and generosity. So there's another lay, lay people there. I think there's maybe like seven or eight people that are in the kitchen that are helping prepare the food for the monks. Because uh, the monks eat a little bit later in the morning. So I think it's around 1030, maybe close to 11 a.m. that the monks eat. So uh, before even anybody eats, actually, uh, the monks, uh, the lay people and other people from the community gather around uh, where the meditation hall was. And then for some chanting and some uh, morning um, song. So we went through the chanting and the morning songs. And then after that was all done, the food was done at that point in time too and was brought over by a cart. And then we pushed the cart up this steep hill in order to get up to the meditation hall. This whole uh, monastery was up on a hill and then there's like hills to get to the very top of where the meditation hall was. So the food had to be transported there to make an offering for the monks each day. And so they have their bowls and they're coming down the hill to uh, get an offering of their food. Uh, and then we're, we're all, of course, having that all ready for them so we can uh, give deliver that food to them so they all can partake in their meal, their one meal of the day. So they have their little bowls. They're actually not little. It's actually pretty big. can fit quite a bit of food there. And then each, each um, monk gets to have uh, a little bit of each item or entree that was made for them for the day and so at that point in time they eat quietly in the meditation hall and then um the lay people basically stay there and i think we do some more chanting i believe and then um once that is all done then we go back uh and the lay people actually get a chance to eat whatever's left over so we'll go back to the kitchen and the food's just like set up on tables so everybody can kind of uh, divvy up uh, and get some food for the day because the lay people that stay there are eating about one time a day as well. And so that's our opportunity to get some food as well. And so we do that. And then after everything's done, after the lay people have eaten, then it's cleanup time. So I volunteered with a number of other um, lay people to clean up and uh, clean up all the dishes, get everything all organized, like um, nothing ever even happened. So somebody was in charge of cleaning the dishes. Somebody was in charge of uh, drying them. Somebody was in charge, of course, um, putting all the uh, foodstuffs back away so they're in their proper places. So we all did that as well. And then uh, after that, after everything was all done there, then it was uh, about noontime. And at noontime, uh, I guess this was a special thing. I happened to be there while they, at a certain time of the year where they offered another meditation and another uh, Dhamma talk, another lesson in the middle of the day. So we would go to this area that was like, uh, had all these little sp spots, these platforms that you could sit in meditation. And it was all done outside in a, a little forest type uh, area with some trees around. And there was a, a statue of a Buddha there. 
And that's where we uh, practice some meditation there as well. Once again, that was really hard. I had I was on top of a hard surface. I didn't even have a cushion this time, so it was really hard for me to sit in any position that really felt comfortable. So I think uh, it was a, a little shorter the period of time. I think it was only maybe 30 or 45 minutes, so it's a little shorter than the morning meditation or the evening meditation that we had before. So I get an opportunity to sit in meditation here and for that one day that we were there, it was actually pretty hot. So I was actually in the sun. So I was sweating profusely after the meditation was done because we were right like directly in the sun. Some of the spots uh, where we uh, were meditating were in direct sunlight. Some were actually in shade, depending on where you are at in the uh, area, because there were some trees that provided some shade cover, but not every spot was covered by shade. And I happened to be in one of the spots that was in direct sunlight. So I was sweating bullets <laughs> so then after uh we were done with that then we had a, a little bit of time downtime to go either read maybe meditate some more have some quiet time so i went to my tent i decided to read so i finished that book with each and every breath and then i wanted to start another book so then i started another book as well that i had gotten another dhamma book so another book that I started after that was a book called Noble Strategy. And that was another book that had some teachings from the Buddha that I had started. A very short book. I think it was like less than 100 pages. So the first book I read was the uh, With Teaching Every Breath. And I think that was a little bit over 100 pages. So that took a little bit more time. But I was able to finish that one in that free time. And then uh, once we are... Once all that was done, we had a little free time between like about 1 p.m. and 5 p.m. There was an opportunity... For us to go uh, to the meditation hall and have our questions answered on our meditation practice, any questions we had on that or have any questions on Buddhism. And so the abbot, uh, Ajahn Jeffrey, was there available to answer any questions. And he did that regularly a lot of times at 5 p.m. Sometimes people had questions. Some people didn't have many questions. Maybe there's some people that have one or two questions. Sometimes there was a whole bunch of questions like, Maybe like five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten questions. So maybe it'll last 45 minutes, an hour of this question and answer time. Or sometimes it would just last for five or ten minutes, depending on how many questions that the lay people would have that went to the uh, question and answers uh, portion of the day. So we went to do that, uh, answering questions. I, I remember one of the questions I asked, I was asking, can you meditate while running? And then Ajahn Jeffrey said, I, you, you can. And so that was encouraging because at the time I was really a big time runner and I hadn't like went without basically running for about I hadn't really gone more than maybe a day or two without running since I was like in junior high school so uh, that's why I asked that question because it was something I wanted to continue um and so uh he basically answered that question I was like wow this is great I can actually meditate while running so after that we had some more uh free time and um uh so in between that time, I decided to read some more and kind of walk around the monastery and kind of get a feel for it a little bit more. And then um, after that was over, then we had, a I think, an 8 p.m. meditation. It was also an hour long. So once again, it was kind of hard for me to sit. It was not easy. My uh, hips just felt like kind of out of place. Everything felt kind of stiff. Uh, nothing felt at ease. I kept having to squirm and move throughout the time and we had another Dhamma talk and uh, eventually it was like pitch black by the time we were done with the hour long meditation and then after that some people chose to uh, meditate even longer some people chose to go back to their um, campsite or with their tent or whatever and maybe do some practice some meditation mm -hmm. night meditation and then uh, some others uh, were deciding to um, even, uh, maybe even do some, uh, a little night hike or do something else that was a little bit different. So that was my first couple days at Wameta. And then I had one more night. So after the night was over another morning. And once again, I woke up early without an alarm because I didn't have my phone on and we had another 6 a.m. Uh, morning meditation. Um, it felt like uh, it was getting a little bit easier to be uh, sitting for 60 minutes. However, I was still stiff. 
I still had a hard time sitting still, so I kept moving and trying to find a position that would actually make me feel at ease and definitely did not find it. <laughs> so same thing the next day, we actually had some chores in the mid morning and I uh, volunteered to do some more chores. And then after that, uh, helped with uh, preparing the food for the monks and then uh, using one of their carts to push all the food up to the hill uh, next to the meditation hall with where the uh, monks would traditionally eat and take their alms round, which is basically accepting the food that was offered to them in their bowls. So we did that again. Of course, we had some chanting be ahead of time before that. And then afterwards, um, the lay people got to eat as well. Because uh, we had a pretty long drive to get back. Because I think we were driving for about four hours away. Because at the time, I was living in Bakersfield, California. And I was about four hours from Valley Center, maybe even a little bit longer than that. So uh, right after, uh, we ate and we, uh, had a chance to, uh, maybe visit a little bit more with the monks, uh, me and my friend Matt headed back and I survived the Buddhist boot camp, even though it was very painful <laughs> to sit for a long period of time and just eat. And I didn't even really explain on how much I was feeling hungry. Like all I was thinking about, like in the later part of the day, it was food. And of course, I didn't have any food to eat, so <laughs> so it was like getting a little of extra hunger pains that I wasn't used to. It was the first time in my life I actually ever tried only eating once in one, once per day. So that was a normal occurrence for the monks. They were just used they're used to eating one time every day. So that was my experience, and I survived the Buddhist boot camp, and it started this path for me of inner well being. Uh, there was many, many times uh, later on that I went back to the monastery, uh, even for longer periods of time. And then uh, there was many, many days where I was meditating nearly every day from that day onward. And then I was listening to Dhamma talks that were uh, done by uh, Ajahn Jeffrey that he would put on a website called dhammatalks.org, as well as all his books that he had as well. And so it was awesome to be able to have that opportunity to listen to his Dhamma talks uh, via audio or read anything that was on there. And also, they all had available to order books online and they would send it to you if you wanted to uh, partake in reading one of the books that Ajahn Jeffrey translator wrote in uh, English. So um, during that whole process, I started this journey of inner well-being and it, it continues today. And it's been much enhanced since I started at that particular time. I remember at the time, I was always the kind of person that felt very anxious, and sometimes I felt like a bottled up sometimes anger and would be have the capacity to even blow up on somebody after a period of time. And then after uh, some time of practicing meditation and eventually going into more yoga practices, I was feeling much more at ease in the body. And now I feel I can completely credit my meditation from the start of Buddhism and my practice of yoga and meditation to my feelings of inner well-being and being happy on a more of a continuous basis on a daily uh, realm. And I feel like I have the control to have my inner self be completely at ease. So my outer environment doesn't affect me in maybe the ways that the average person may be affected by it. So hopefully that was uh, interesting. Uh, hopefully that was a little entertaining. Hopefully you got something out of it. Any questions or comments? please let me know. If you like my channel, please subscribe below. Anyways, have a great rest of your evening and uh, namaste.